I'm a fashion content creator, as they say in Francais. I make videos here on the YouTube and the TikTok, not as much on the TikTok recently because I don't get paid. How am I getting a million views on a video and I don't get paid? Regardless, naturally people will reach out on my dead Instagram and ask me for fashion advice, whether it be what should I get for the summer or what shoes do you recommend or you don't know anything about fashion, can you stop? And other variations of these questions. I find it frustrating because truthfully, there is no one answer. So I don't know. Fashion and style is subjective and in my opinion, complete opposite things. Maybe not, okay, maybe not opposite things, but they're not necessarily related. The type of fashion that I love to talk about and analyze is completely different to how I dress in real life currently. I don't know you, so I can't tell you what I think you should wear, but I can give a guide on how to find out yourself. So welcome to the video. This is my guide on how to dress well or how to be satisfied with how you dress. And I'll talk about my personal style and why I don't post on Instagram and such at the end of the video. This video isn't gonna be discussing like styling tips or trends and stuff, rather my outlook and philosophy on personal style. Not how I look at like runway fashion and design, simply how I approach buying clothes for myself to wear. This is just my opinion. I would love to hear other people's thoughts and approaches. Okay, first let's get one thing clear. The most important thing I can tell you about personal style is that you have to dress for yourself. When you say that you want to dress well, for who? For a certain gender? For your parents? For your priest? One thing that I love about fashion is that it is in a sense one of the purest forms of self-expression that is criminally underused by most people. I love art, as in paintings, but all paintings are static in a sense. If you buy a piece of art for your home and hang it up, it stays there on your wall and it's only seen by you and the people you let into your home. There's many reasons you may buy a piece of art. For me, the biggest reason is how I relate to it and what it stands for. In a way, it represents me, my values, mindset, morals, whatever. It can it can represent a lot of things about me. However, you see it the most. It's there for you. When you wear clothes, everyone who looks at you sees what you're wearing and that represents their image of you. So in the same way that a painting represents you, so do your clothes. And one could argue, one being me, that your clothes are even more important than the paintings when it comes to representing you because because everyone you come across sees what you're wearing and their perception of you is largely formed from that. Don't be fooled. That still means that you should absolutely only dress for yourself in the same way that you'd only buy a painting for ho your home that you would like, not that other people in general would like. This is gonna be all right, so, so buckle in. Surely you want other people's perception of you to be accurate, right? There's a reason that clothing comes with so many connotations to it. You can tell a lot about a person from how they dress. Even if you think that they don't really care about how they dress, they still decide what they want to wear and what they like. The best way you can dress is in a way that best represents you. That's what I think. And I don't know you, so again, I have no idea what to recommend. But also, do you really know yourself? I'm 20 years old, and I'll say that I've started to really understand things about myself and who I am, like, recently. Like, in the past two years, I felt most comfortable and like myself as I ever have. And I know, I'm only 20 years old. A lot of people a lot of old heads might be shaking their head and be like, boy, you know nothing. <laughs> I know how I felt as a teenager and how I feel now. And in part, I have fashion to thank for my newfound appreciation of myself. I've always been interested in different aesthetics and design and art, but I always find myself getting bored with things quickly, especially when the main appealing factor about something is it being aesthetically appealing. For me, the most visually appealing thing I've ever seen is always gonna be changing to the most recent thing I see that I find visually appealing, as it's brand new to my mind. This is why I think Pinterest can be destructive for your creativity. How can you be creative and yourself when you're being fed all these amazing things every time you're on Pinterest? I find it distracting. When I was creating my portfolio for the fashion school I was applying for, it's crazy to see just how much inspiration you can take from a select amount of images when you really look into them and block out everything else. What I'm saying is things that are only visually pleasing lose value quickly. This includes clothes. And I think the best way to be satisfied with your wardrobe is find that middle portion. You know, in like a Venn diagram, this, this part. You want clothes that are both visually appealing to you and mean something significant to you. And that takes time because in the same way that things lose visual value, they gain an emotional value. This this cup is ugly as shit and looks like a generic Christmas cup. This cup has followed me where I've lived since I could walk and talk. This plate is passed down from my grandma, and you know you know what that tells you? I gotta clean my desk. I'm using I'm using this I'm using this cup as a bin. No, no, no. These are just examples of how things may acquire meaning and memories over time. It takes time to find meaning in things, and it doesn't have to be that deep. Not every clothing is gonna be passed down to your family. It doesn't have to be that sentimental. Just when you see an item of clothing, it should make you feel a certain way. Not in the sense of how you feel wearing it or what you think about how it looks. You should be able to see something of yourself in that item. These shoes, these ASICs, I'm not gonna get them there downstairs, but I bought them after knowing and looking at them for over a year. And I remember vividly a bit after I had first seen them where I was like, nah, I don't actually like these as much anymore. But after seeing them more and analyzing the design elements and how I felt about the shoes, it, it went full circle. This point of visually interesting things losing value quickly is why I'm also generally against overusing social media like Instagram and Pinterest. You see more stuff 
and think that you like it, which leads to overconsuming, wasting money, and also not really being true to yourself, which will not leave you happy with what you bought. This is kind of what I did when I first started making money, and I've learned a lesson from buying useless or meaningless crap. And now I am so, so picky with what I buy. I am not, I'm numb to social media marketing these days. In a way, it's made me acquire some better taste. <laughs> anyway, I keep losing track. Uh, so I said I have fashion to thank for helping me be introspective about who I am as a person now. Let me tell you how. To keep a long story short, I'm not going to give you my autobiography. Uh, I didn't have money to be constantly buying new clothes. And I thought there must be a reason why I like certain things so that I would have to spend less money on clothes and be unsatisfied with my wardrobe. I started looking into designers and brands like Vivian Westwood, Colm de Garçon, Margiela, and I was amazed by how expressive these people were through their fashion. It's like everything they stood for they put into clothes that they made and the vision that they had for how expressive people could be. And I realized with what I wore and who I was, I kind of stood for nothing. I got the same haircut that most people did because I thought it looked cool. I dressed how I saw people around me dressing. So no wonder I wasn't happy with it because I really didn't have my own identity. So I brought into I bought into brands and clothes that I thought expressed my identity. I liked Gosha a lot at one point and I think that was me trying to identify with my Ukrainian roots. Look, I've been to Ukraine once. I can't speak Ukrainian and I can only somewhat read and understand Russian. You put me in Eastern Europe and I am dead. That's not who I am. But at the same time, I don't really identify with the Irish culture that I grew up in. What can I say? I'm in a I'm in like an awkward limbo area. The point in all this is pay attention to what you wear and experiment. You may say I wasted my money on Gosha, but in a way it made me realize that I don't really identify with this item as much as I thought I did. And that's because I don't identify with the Eastern European lifestyle that it stood for. And so I moved on. Eventually I found things that represented me better and the clothes followed. It was because of the clothes that I wanted to, you know, find out more about myself and see what I was actually interested in and see where I could take inspiration from. Skating is something I leaned into and paid off. It's one of my favorite things to do every day. In general, I'm also, I am also curious about design and questioning things. So obviously I'm going to be interested in avant-garde clothing that messes with our idea of what fashion is. And that avant-garde clothing is what showed me that I had that interest. What can I say? Art is power, people. So okay, how can you take everything I've said and actually apply the theory around buying clothes? Now I've developed my own theory. How does one find clothes that fit here? Here's how I think you can find your style as I've learned to find mine. First off, and you may not like this, but it requires patience. I know. Good things take time. Yes, I, I, was the, I am the first person to say this line. Please give me credit. I think the better you know yourself, the easier time you're going to have. So first, get introspective. Step two, obviously you have to browse and explore a lot. Especially if you're trying to get into developing your style, Pinterest isn't the worst place to start. Use Pinterest as a search engine that's suggesting you ideas. If you find clothes that you really like, find out where it's from, who made it, how much it cost, what the style is called, similar brands like it. You can get a lot of information from one Pinterest image. It, that's, that's the important thing. Just don't go on an endless doom scroll. I don't think Pinterest is bad like anything. You have to be mindful about how you use it. Waiting before you buy something and, 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 and learning about things is the hardest part and easiest at the same time. If you find an item you want to buy, look at it over the next few weeks or months and think about it. How would you style it? What do you want to combine it with and why you think you like it? I think our aesthetic preferences are heavily linked to our personality and ideas in general. I think there's there's a reason for why you like something beyond it being cool. There's a reason why you think something is cool. And I know it's cringe to be sincere and explain stuff. It's not cool if you explain why it's cool. Guess what, chump? It's even cooler if you know why it's cool in the first place. <laughs> Again, my favorite part about art, and I think everyone who appreciates art, is that it makes you think about stuff. Not that it's pretty to look at for a couple of seconds. So you should take this approach towards art, towards your clothes. You're going to have to take risks. And, and look, you as a person change. So the clothes you bought a year ago may not represent who you are now. But that's why I think it's even more important to wait before buying stuff and thinking about why you're buying it in the first place. Are you buying baggy skate clothes because you started cruising on your longboard for a week and all of a sudden you think you're a skater now? Maybe skate a little longer and see if you stay at it and still like it. You have to invest time in yourself if you want to dress your best. Because as I said, the way you dress is an expression of different parts of your personality. I should I should mention also that you probably like multiple things. So by all means, try different styles, mix and match. There are so many sources of stuff that you like that you can take inspiration from. That's what makes your personal style. Another one of my philosophies for buying clothes, goddamn, call me, call me fashion philosopher for, call me fashion Noam Chomsky. <laughs> anyway, it's less is more. Yes, another fashion philosopher for line. I am the first to say this. Let me show you, like I have two hoodies, this one and this. These are the only two hoodies I have and I have no desire to buy more hoodies until these inevitably become unwearable. Hoodies, in my opinion, stylistically serve the same purpose, no matter what graphic is on them or the color. You could argue more about the color 
than the graphic in my opinion. But I think that silhouette is the most important factor when it comes to how clothing is interpreted. I have two pairs of jeans, one for skating and one for swag purposes. I have no desire to buy more because they both fit slightly differently exactly how I like. And if you try your best to compromise as little as possible when buying the items you want, you'll find yourself to be more satisfied with what you get. I want some Dirk Metal Heel boots. They go crazy. I've liked them for a very long time. I could go buy some standard boots now, but I know that I truly won't be satisfied unless, unless I get these Dirks. And I could get some standard boots and wear them for a year and then replace them with the boots I actually wanted. But then not only am I spending more money, I'm also wasting clothes, you know? True, you can go and sell it, but unless it's a valuable item, you may struggle to sell it for that much. Like, if you want to resell the Dirks, I would probably get most of my money back. But a pair of, like, standard Doc Martens a very accessible boot that's not going to sell as well i'm not only trying to make you dress better i'm also trying to save you money okay so listen <laughs> do what you want do what you want look there are going to be exceptions to everything i've said maybe you found an item for cheap on depop and you have to act quickly or someone else will buy it or you're at a charity store and obviously it can be gone the next day you'll have to take a risk but the better you know yourself and your style the better you'll be able to determine if you're going to like something in the long run not every single item you wear every day has got to be that expressive of your personality sometimes you solely dress for comfort although i'd still argue that your comfort clothes still reflect who you are to some extent but obviously it doesn't have to be that deep like at the same time there's there's meaning to everything but also it's just close <laughs> it's it's meant to be fun i'm not saying all this in such a serious manner like you have to do this to be sustainable or to be true to yourself this is what works for me and leaves me satisfied when it comes to my personal style i think this is a good mindset to have to achieve a style and wardrobe that you're happy with while also having a sustainable uh, approach towards fashion and the environment and your bank account it doesn't matter where you buy your clothes from whether it's fast fashion or brand new designer or whatever and i think that's i think that's the biggest tip i can give towards personal style it should be connected to who you are as a person this way i don't feel the need to buy more clothes when I've put in the time to look for the ones that suit exactly what I'm going for. This blue hoodie cost me about 100 euro. That's crazy for a hoodie. It was also shipping, you know, but all in 100 euro. But you have to understand, I was, I've been looking for the perfect hoodie to fit me for a very long time. And I'm really, I'm really happy with it. I'm as happy as it with the day, as the day I bought it. One last thing I wanted to add is that I think a big reason for why I have the mindset I described in this video about clothes is because of sewing my own pieces over the last few years. When you're involved in every part of the process, you become especially attached to what you're making. That doesn't make it good. And I've learned that through making a load of crap and having to face the reality that I don't like what I just put so much effort into making. But it has taught me to reevaluate and think harder about what I look for in the clothes that I wear and make and to make things that are better and true to what I like and who I am. And so I think this approach to making clothes can be applied to what clothes you should be wearing. Okay, that's the main part of the video over. So thanks for watching. I've had a very fatigued week trying to change my sleep schedule as I just finished working a night shift job and I'm going on holiday. So that's why this video is a bit shorter and lower effort this week. Sorry. The Virgil analysis is next week. So stay tuned. Sub for sub. Not. I'm not swimming back. <laughs> I'm, I'm going to quickly talk about why I don't post on Instagram and my personal style if you'd like to listen along. I have never been a social media person and posted pics. I also don't take many pictures of myself or what I do every day. I guess you could say I'm a, I'm a, I'm a live in the moment type of guy. I honestly find it a bit draining to go out of my way taking photos. And also I have like three or four good outfits. As I said, I don't have that many clothes. All this, all this behind me, it's a mix of my clothes, my brother's clothes, and my old teenager clothes that don't fit me or I don't like. My entire wardrobe, including shoes, fits into a suitcase. Anyway, after three posts, my Instagram career would be over. I have a decent closet for normal person standards. It's not all at the level I would like it to be ideally, but I'm okay with that. Like, I don't have the money to be spending so freely on clothes. I have uni and accommodation to pay for. Once I start making money from YouTube, I definitely have items in mind. But ideally, ideally, I just want to sew all of my clothes myself and have a closet full of clothes that I made. How sick would that be? Where'd you get, wait, wait, where'd you get your pants from, bro? I made it. In fact, everything I'm wearing, I made it. That's right. And when I'm at that point, I'll post on Instagram. Thank you for watching. I hope you got something from this video. Mr. Abla's legacy will be discussed in depth next week. Thank you.